Okay, so once you have your measurements and once you've drawn in a diagram, it's time to go set up our equation. And there's basically two different sort of paradigms that we're working with. One is the law of signs, um, which we reviewed and went over last week. And the other is uh, sine, cosine, tangent, um, which requires that you have a right triangle. So as I look at my two uh, scenarios here, this one here, there's no right angle, so I'm definitely going to be using the law of sines. Okay, I'm going to be using the law of sines for this one. Okay. And then this one has a right triangle, right angle, so I'm going to be using Sokotoa, which is what we've been using for all right triangle problems. Okay. So first step is just to know, should I be doing sine, cosine, or tangent, is that what I should be doing? Or should I be doing law of sines of deciding which one? And basically it comes down to, is there a right angle? If the answer is yes, sine, cosine, tangent is the way to go. If the answer is no, then law of sines. The next thing to do is to identify, well, what in the world am I trying to figure out? What do I want to know? So in the case of this example, I want to know the distance from the pole to the tree. Okay. And so I'm going to just call this side, I'm just going to call it D. That's the distance. And then <coughs> over here, I'm trying to find the height of idea. So let me just call this side H for height. Distance, D, height, H. Sure. Looks good. So I got to define what is the thing that I want to know. I want to know the distance between the pole and the tree or the distance between, you know, here and there, whatever. And then mark that with like D or some letter X you could use. You know, I want to know the height, so you use, I'm using H for height, okay? So put that in there. And then the next thing you need to do is go ahead and write the equation. So I'm going to give you examples here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, using the law of signs, it says I can take that D, and I'm going to write it, I'm going to write this equation right up here. So I can take the D, the unknown, and divide it by the sign of the angle that's across from it. So here's, this, here's side D. The angle on the other side is 103 degrees. The other way of thinking about it is if you look at side, this side uh, length that's D, if I go up it, I get to the 5 degree angle. If I go down it, I get to the 72 degree angle. The angle that's across from it is neither of those. So 103 is the only one there. So D over the sine of 103 thing I want to know divided by the sine of the angle on the other side. And then I take the thing I do know, which in this case is 122 and 5 eighths, which I'm going to write it as a decimal. Don't worry if you don't know what the decimal <laughs> is off the top of your head. You can um, use a calculator there. But it's 122.625 is 5 eighths. And then oops, uh, divided by the sine of the angle across from it. So as I look at this piece, at the end of this two piece are these angles, so the angle across from it is that other one, which is five degrees. Okay, so that's the law of sines. The thing I don't know divided by the angle, the sine of the angle across from it, equals the length I did measure divided by the sine of the angle across from it. Okay, now what about height here? So if I have a right angle, then I can go ahead and just use sine, cosine, or tangent. And if I'm looking at this angle up here, this 28 degree angle, then what I, uh, what I would be doing here is I'd be identifying well, what's the opposite, what's the adjacent, what's the hypotenuse. Well, it's actually pretty uh, easy to identify the hypotenuse, the longest side right here, hypotenuse across from the right angle. However, it depends on which one you look at. So if I were to do mine, which this is 28 degrees, the opposite would be 22. And the adjacent would be height. The opposite would be 22, the adjacent would be height. However, for the sake of making it uh, more similar to what most of you are probably going to do, and it actually makes the mathematics easier, if you pick this bottom angle, it actually uh, is, is probably the one you measured, and it's going to make the math easier. So if I look at this bottom angle and I go across, that makes H, H is the opposite. 
It's on the opposite side. And so if that's the opposite and that's the hypotenuse, that means that this is the adjacent. And then uh, it's been a little while since we focused on this before our break. But I want to know the opposite. And I already know the adjacent. So as I look at my list here, well, this is opposite and hypotenuse. Well, I don't need to know the hypotenuse. This is adjacent and hypotenuse. I, again, I don't need to know the hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And, uh, and so therefore, I, I want to know the opposite. I know the adjacent. I'm going to use tangent. So here I'm going to write the equation where tangent of my angle that I picked, which is this bottom one, 62 degrees, is equal to the opposite. The thing I don't know is h divided by the adjacent, which I do know is 22. Okay. And in the next video or next session for us, I'm going to walk through solving these and remind you how to solve these. Some of you may already know exactly what to do. You've remembered what to do, and that's great. You can actually go ahead and solve it. Okay, so there you go.